And we are live. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Ben. And hey, everyone. What's going on? How you doing? I'm good. How is it over there in Chicago tonight? It's, it's going pretty good. Um, nice. Just ready to kind of get into some whiskey here. It's been a beautiful day here in New York. It was like, I think it hit almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It was hot. No, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, I've been uh, kind of uh, looking out the window. It's been a beautiful day here, too, but I'm pretty excited. So for everybody who's who's in right now, welcome. Um, as you know, I'm Ben Dietrich with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and this is my partner in crime here. Hi, Amanda Victoria, also with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. So, yeah, I know for those of you who are watching and coming in, we might be a few minutes to get settled, but um, you likely either came from Instagram or YouTube, or uh, if you're one of our members, probably our email us as well. And so I'm sure you're familiar with this society, but um, maybe we should give a quick little rundown of, of what we do. I mean, for those. Yeah, maybe a little overview of the Scotch Font Whiskey Society. It's been a big day for us, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you want to feel free to kick it off, Amanda? Sure, sure. Um, so for those joining, the Scotch Font Whiskey Society is the world's leading whiskey club. Um, what I love about the society and what I love, like to introduce the society as is a community of whiskey lovers around the world. There are about just under 30,000 people around the world right now, currently, um, card-holding members of the Scotch Font Whiskey Society. The society dates back to um, the early 80s in Edinburgh, and um, we partner uniquely with over 130 distilleries in Scotland and around the world and beyond to always bottle single cask whiskey, always done at cask strength, and other spirits too these days. Um, but we're known for our Scotch whiskey. So today was a big day for us um, for a few different reasons, but we just dropped our new outturn, our May outturn. So Ben and I, and, and I are here to introduce some of the new whiskeys available at smwsa.com. Hopefully, if you guys fall in love with anything, you're able to snatch it up while it's hot. Um, things are going very fast today. Uh, so if you fall in love with anything, the worst type of emails that I get are the emails that are about the dearly departed whiskey that is, is gone forever. Um, I guess that's a brief overview. Ben, any other any other plugs in there that I'm missing? Yeah, so I think everybody, you know, um, if those of you who were here last month, that was our first time kicking this off. And the idea with this live tasting is, you know, there are many society members, just whiskey lovers around the United States, in our country here, um, we don't get to beat with face to face. And so, Every month we have all these new and exciting whiskeys coming out, and we want to just kind of help by giving a little bit of context, or just genuine opinions of these whiskeys, and as we'll be tasting them this evening. But more importantly than that, I think, is this idea of coming together. And, you know, Amanda and I spend a lot of time on social media talking about whiskey and, and meeting other people, both online and the real world, uh, through social media. And so I think for all of you who are joining us, if you're a society member, great. If not, you know, join the conversation nonetheless. You really want to connect people together um, that's really what the society is about in essence. And so in addition to, to sampling the new, excuse me, previewing the new whiskeys coming out, we also pulled some fan favorites from recent months. So those whiskeys, maybe I'll just run through them real quick. Okay. Are, yeah, we're hoping that some of the viewers tonight have one of these three whiskeys at home and can join in. And I think the whole goal for Ben and I for doing this show is to try to create a community of um, whiskey lovers on, on the internet and bring us together digitally in a format that is not as common these days. So we're just starting out. Hopefully uh, you guys are joining in. And you want to go through the first one, 48.82? Yeah, so just just real quick, we'll, we'll come back to these and taste these all together. But if you do have these at home, we just encourage you, feel free to pour yourself a dram. Um, we'll be turning to you guys to share your opinions of these whiskeys, but 48.82 is vivacious, zesty, and penetrating. That's the first one. Um, then we're going to move on to a more recent release that actually just came out last month. I know this was a popular one. It's 37.96 cinnamon semolina pudding. Um, excited to revisit that one. So much cinnamon on the nose on that one. Well, like uh, breakfast oatmeal. And then probably one of our hottest sellers of, of last month, um, a whiskey that a lot of members got really, really excited about, uh, one that we actually tasted together last month live as well was 4226 smoke plum lemonade 12 year old highland and so we know a lot of you went out and, and purchased that even before we did the tasting but more so after the fact and so for those of you who have those whiskeys at home you know we'll be coming back to those 
feel free to pour yourself a dram, sip on it while we're going through this. But um, for the time being, we'll, we'll kind of cut into the intro to some of these whiskeys. And this is obviously a very special one. I mean, maybe, man, if you want to touch on a little bit about what makes this outturn and kind of today for the society is so special. Okay, yeah. So today, May 1st, <laughs> 2018, will go down in society history, I think, um, for a, a big reason, I guess. Um, the society recently won seven out of seven submitted whiskeys to the San Francisco Spirits World Spirits Competition. We, we won seven double gold medals, um, which is really unheard of. Um, also, within all of that, we won Best Whiskey in Show, and that means that the whiskey that we're actually, this one, that we'll be tasting very soon, um, won Best Whiskey in Show at this really prestigious award show um, that takes place. It was the 17th year that the award show took place in San Francisco. It's very well known in the trade and, and the beverage industry. Um, people submit their products from all around the world as they create them. They're very proud to submit them to this show. It brings together about 30 or so of the, um, the best luminaries uh, as judges in spirits. Um, people like Dave Wondridge, who is the spirits writer for Esquire magazine, all come together and um, kind of raise their hands, so to speak, uh, around determining what the best spirits are. Total, there were about 2,500 spirits in general submitted to the competition this year. To give you a perspective, it's a three-day long um, frenzy of going through to over 2,500 spirits. And as you can imagine, with it being a very hot moment for whiskey, a lot of those spirits were whiskey. And those whiskeys were coming from Scotland, Canada, America, Japan. Um, everywhere. Uh, they were coming from all over and one of the whiskeys that we're trying tonight um, was the absolute foremost winner uh, of the competition amongst all those countries and um, won best in show. So it's a real honor for the society to, to take home all of these seven double uh, medals, um, but especially this, this best in show medal. And these medals are really representative of Scotland, I think, the passion of Scotland and the whiskey makers out of Scotland. Um, as you know, the society, by definition, we're a community. Um, and I guess fundamentally, and I don't like to introduce us this way, but we are an independent bottler. So we do rely on our partnerships and our relationships with the distillers of Scotland that go back many, many generations off of email and into handshakes. Um, so what that means is that this, these awards are really for so many people, so many generations of distillers and workers, everyone who produces the whiskey, um, to all of us who then get the opportunity to present that whiskey to you guys at home um, and when it arrives finally in our glasses. So it's, it's for our members, it's, from, it's for Scotland, but it's been a really big day for us uh, <laughs> overall and something to be proud of. I think we'll remember this time um, as a new chapter for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Yeah, so I think, you know, with that, we will be tasting that whiskey. It's, an, it's a really exciting one, of course. We're very excited about it. Um, obviously, a lot of hard work has gone into it. But really, for our members, you know, when we, when we bottle things, we really try to give our members what they're looking for. And so we really credit them as well for, for this for the just kind of success of the society. Obviously, it's growing. And getting the acknowledgement is great. But in the interest of time, I want to kind of get cut to the chase and get to what everybody's really, I think, here for is Drink you know, other things. Is we have some incredible whiskeys that just came out today. Um, so let's kind of run through real quick. Yeah, let's introduce the whiskeys. All right, Ben, um, you want to kick it off with uh, 54.51, which is entitled Insanely Drinkable. Um, it is an 11 year old space side. I'm just going to dive right in on the nose here. Yeah, so this is you know kind of important to note. So, um, eleven year old, it, it, it's intended so in a refill barrel, American elk ex bourbon, bottled at fifty nine point five percent, available as of just a few hours ago for one hundred and fifteen U S dollars. It's in the juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. We have these flavor profiles um, really kind of as a roadmap to, for for our members who, you know, don't. From a single cast whiskey perspective, sometimes it's hard to really understand what you're going to get um, because nature is kind of random at times. And so we categorize the flavor and the experience of each whiskey into 12 core flavor profiles. 
And this kind of gives some guidance to members to understand what they can expect. So if you're not really too keen on, on naming specific distilleries or, or, or very familiar with different distilleries, you kind of know the flavors that you like. That's really a helpful roadmap. So this is in the juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile. So I, I totally see why we're starting with this one, Ben. It's the first whiskey of the night, um, for me at least. Uh, I get a lot of like that beautiful, fresh green apple on the nose. Um, yeah, it's, it's bright, a lot of honey, caramel. Super bright, super bright, super juicy for sure. Um, this is perfect, would go really, really well with um, a nice charcuterie cheese board, maybe some hard cheeses with some drizzled honey on there. Um, some dried fruits as a, a pairing would be perfect. Um, absolutely exactly where you would like to start the night. And the difference, I guess, from the nose to the palate. It's kind of malty on the palate. It's a bit more malty than I expected for something that was so juicy on the nose. Yeah, it's good. I think, I think this is spot on. You know, in that flavor profile of juicy oak and vanilla, it's got some exotic fruits. The, the bright honey element is really strong. Very much a springtime to whiskey. And really kind of an everyday dram is what I think about this one. Totally. Uh, we're going to kind of we're gonna run through these because we got a lot to go through. And so, yeah. um, so moving on to whiskey number two then. Um, it is from Distillery 100. It is the 14th cast from Distillery 100, so that is 100.14. It is entitled Boozy Basil Blueberries. It's a 12-year-old Speyside. And I am getting some, some blueberry right off the nose, but also I just said blueberry, so you could never be too sure. Yeah, so 12 years in a refill bourbon, a refill barrel right here, um, ex-bourbon. Similar cast to the previous one, a, a bit a bit older by a year, but very, very different right away. I think this is, you know, the, the first one I think was a bit more of a classic, traditional uh, space side whiskey. This is, there is a unique element, that blueberry as it's described, um, and maybe some mint and basil. It really adds some complexity that makes this one a bit fun. Yeah, totally. This is like, um, like a breeze through an herb garden. Um, definitely some mint, definitely some basil kind of rounding that out. Boozy basil blueberry. Um, for me, I, I think we're still, as far as food pairings go, I think we're still in the beginning of the evening um, with that charcuterie and uh, cheese plate, for sure. Um, yeah, this is very much a, like a spring or summer afternoon dram for me. Yeah, this is a total aperitif. Yeah. Really lovely. Um, super gentle, a lot of honey still on the on the palate for me. Um, alternatively, I could easily have this in the bath as well as a nightcap. <laughs> um, so I don't know, it goes both ways. We want to go to number three then. We got a lot to go through tonight, guys. Yeah. So that again, you know, just to kind of reiterate for those or for those who are just joining us, we're running through the new casts that have just come out as of today in our May 2018 outturn. Um, we're going to run through these, going to share a brief just initial impressions of them. And then we're going to cut to some of these casts that I think a lot of our members do have already. We'll open up the discussion. So we're keeping track. If you have any questions, ask the question in the chat box. Um, I'll be monitoring that this whole time. And then after we're done with the preview, we'll revisit. But uh, Do we have any questions yet, Ben? Nothing? Yeah, a lot, a lot of comments coming in. I think a lot of people... Let's, are let's take a second to just review. Anything... Well, I think we can come back. I mean, we okay. get. Okay. Come back. Yeah. So we're right. so on number three now. Yeah. Um, number three is fifty point ninety five. So that is our fifty fiftieth distillery partner, the ninety fifth cask. It is entitled Magical Moments, and as far as age statements go for this lineup, it might be our oldest at twenty seven years. It is a Lowland. Yeah. So this is a unique whiskey. I want to show this bottle here. Um, this is a, a different packaging that we have from our traditional whiskeys. Um, and I think, and not rather I think, but this one is like many others now that are coming out, really kind of really special, even rare cast. And I think what we're dealing with on a daily basis, which is when everything is a single cast, it's, it's all like that. But this is a 27 year old Lowland whiskey, 50.95 titled Magical Moments. Um, mm. German refill barrel, ex bourbon, 
distilled on January 26, 1990. And you know what's fun about this, when you have an old whiskey, typically the, the strength tends to, to lessen over time. This is still 59.8%. So the lowland, as we know it, is, is very is very floral, grassy, elegant sort of style of whiskey. Um, but at this strength, and at this age, it's really exciting to, to see how this tastes. And that's what you wanting to say, really, again, the same type of pairing as number one and two, but again, a hard cheese um, would be delightful with this. There is a lot of honey. Um, it is super, it, there's a sweetness to it for sure. Um, yeah, the, the depth is profound. I mean, there's there's a lot of, there's cherry, there's some tobacco leaf. Like yeah. Fresh tobacco or not by fresh, I mean, dried and aged, but just prior to, to rolling a, a cigar, for instance, some honey, some, some cinnamon in the back end. Yeah, some really nice baking spice in there for sure. Some cinnamon, maybe a touch of nutmeg. So overall, kind of creamy too. It's a bit creamy on the nose as well. I think what you said, Ben, about it being uh, having that depth is right on. I think at 27 years, you're going to see that. All right. Um, overall, I think this is under the special whiskey, and I'll just show it one more time. 50.95 magical moments. Um, just released today, price at $255. So in terms of the spectrum, it's, it's kind of on the, the higher range from, a, from both an age and, and a price perspective. But I think overall, if you like a lowland style, I just think it, I think it's a beautiful combination of the traditional flavors with a lot, a lot of depth for being kind of a single cask. So Yeah, totally. This is a, a real decadent investment um, for sure. It's a, a timepiece on the back bar. I think that you really nailed it with that that depth comment. I'm getting a lot of like a creaminess about it that is craveable, very craveable. Um, and I love the name Magical Moments. Of course I do. How sentimental. Of course you do. I like it. Of course too. I do. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the fourth whiskey of the evening. We are now um, in the territory of a grain. So this is a grain whiskey at G15, uh, so it's a distillery 0.1. Totally different than anything on the nose so far. It's entitled <laughs> playfully, as I remember this from my childhood, lead us, into, lead us to temptation. So it's a nine year um, highland. And I think what's important about this too, um, we're getting into it. This is the, the, the code is G15.1. And what that means, I know a lot of you are probably familiar with that, but the, we have the point not numerical system. The, the number, or in this case, the letter of the number that goes before the decimal is the distillery code. Number after that is the, the number of casts that we purchased. In this instance, what's really special about this is it's G15.1. Point one suggests it's actually the first bottling from this distillery ever. So this is the first time we've ever bottled something from distillery G15. Yeah, that's a good good point, Ben, just to break down that our quote unquote Dewey decimal system um, coding system for those who don't know. I, I imagine a lot of our viewers and, and of course our members know, um, but that first number is the distillery number partner. So the first number is the distillery. And then after the decimal is the single cask that we've bottled from that distillery. So in this instance, it is the first cast from uh, this grain forward distillery, number 15. So what do you think of this one, Ben? Um, it is a nine-year-old Highland. So what's interesting about this, um, oh, and I want to be very, very open, is that the grain whiskey, I think, is a different style than what I'm typically used to. You know, I, I, my free time, I run a blog about a single malt whiskey, and, and malt is obviously very different from the way it's distilled to the ingredients. Um, this is kind of like in between it. it. It's really, really sweet on the nose, which I like. It's really has great depth for nine years. It's definitely the most unique grain whiskey that I've had from, at least from the society offerings. Right. But, ooh, the right away, ooh, that's, that's right away, some fresh bana bananas, some tropical fruits, like papaya, a little bit of, a little bit of paste on it. And there's like this interesting medical gauze is kind of what I'm getting. It's a bit of strange, it's a bit of strange, but I, I like that uniqueness. 
Yeah. Uh, it's curious. This is a perfect program to take us into those hotter nights. There's a lot of tropical fruits going on. Um, I get passion fruit. Ben, you said banana. <laughs> nice. It's there. Um, it's there. I'm telling you. It's, yeah, it is. Oh my gosh, it is there. I don't know. I, that's really well, you know what I get Ben. I get runts. You know that candy? Yeah, candy. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unique element to it. I, I think it's really enjoyable. Um, definitely noses. I think it tastes older than nine years, which is interesting. Yeah. That's oh. the best um, it's, it's really palatable, just neat. And I actually haven't had water. It's the first time I'm not adding water to any of these so far. Uh, okay. That's really, really enjoyable. So I think $100 is the price point on this uh, for Cast G15.1. Um, again, always excited at the first bottling from a new distillery. And that's what this is. Yeah, the first bottling from a new distillery are often uh, for those collectors out there, there are a lot of people that try to snatch up the first cask always from the new distillery partner. Um, all right, I kind of snuck ahead to the fifth whiskey we'll be trying. And the nose is unlike anything we've seen yet tonight. It is distillery number 66. It is the 108th cask from distillery 66. It is called Caramelized Smokiness. And it is an 11 year old Highland and absolutely caramelized toasted marshmallow right on the nose. This is my fireplace dram for sure. Um, my fireplace or bonfire dram. Yeah, so this is a, this is the, our first peated whiskey. It's in the lightly peated flavor profile. Mm. Um, we actually have three profiles for peated whiskeys from lightly to peated to heavily peated. Um, it's a peated Highland whiskey. You know, a lot of a lot of the peated whiskey comes from the island islands around Scotland. Um, part of Scotland, of course, but off the mainland. This is a mainland peat, and I think you know that you can really tell the difference. It's a bit more approachable and sweeter. Yeah. 11, yeah. Eleven years old, ten years in ex bourbon, one year in first fill Muscatel wine. Oh, nice. Uh, That's interesting. So, how, can you say that again, Ben, for everyone about the cask? This is one of our whiskeys, um, and we're, we'll see more of these from the society recently and moving forward. Is we're taking single cask whiskeys and we're actually moving them into a second cask for for a portion of its life. Uh, in this instance, it was 10 years in American Oak ex bourbon cask, and then it was transferred to a first fill Muscatel wine hogshead. Nice. That And that wine, I think the combination of wine and peat is something I personally enjoy, but. So subdued. It's really, really elegant. Like, it's like a whisper, the, the wine cask. I feel like it adds to, to the peat. Yeah, um, it just, it's an explosion of flavors all around. And I think if you yeah. like peat whiskey, um, it's, you'll like this. If you're not so into peat whiskey, you want a good place to start. I think the, the combination of Highland peat and the, the the kind of the roughing of the edge, excuse me, the, the rounding of the edges of this from the wine cask is, is really unapproachable. Whiskey. This is my, um, I'm not picking favorites, but this is to my palate, let's say, so far. <laughs> um, so distillery 66, cask 108, caramelized smokiness, Five out of five stars recommended. <laughs> yeah, really, really, really enjoyable. I mean, obviously, I think it's funny. This this is one of those whiskeys where I'm seeing more of these now that the names of the, the cast themselves are really kind of signifying the experience we had. I, I noticed this right away the first time I actually laughed aloud because I thought, that's exactly what this is. It's like burnt caramel on the head. Yeah, it's, so. it's um, I absolutely love this whiskey. I'm going to revisit that. That might be my nightcap for tonight, I might say. Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking like. Although I'm speaking too soon. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like summer's coming. You know, it's now it's the spring. The warm weather is here. It's. I'm thinking like when to enjoy this one. It's definitely you know, grilling outside on the barbecue, going okay. um, throw the meat on and some veggies, and then you just have this one kind of by the side. Oh, it's really good. Okay, are you ready for this, Ben, and everyone? Oh yeah, I guess what we everybody. so everybody. Um, Drum roll. Yeah. So the next whiskey is, um, I think the one, we, we went through that pretty quick, I'm impressed. I am impressed, but we're not done yet. We have three more to revisit at the end. <laughs> this, is our last, this is our last whiskey of, um, of May, but I want I want to just throw this out there to be, to be very clear. Um, this whiskey actually did not come out today as part of our May out turn. We're oh, right. dedicating a, a special release later in the month. So it will be coming. Um, it is, in fact, the cast 
29224, we arrived, the one that was just named Best in Show at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. And just to kind of explain further, further, and we can get into this, we'll see, of course, um, because it's so limited, we thought, you know, to, to, to want to give as many people a chance to try this as possible. So we've actually pulled some bottles from our allocation to then bring with us to society tasting events around the U.S. over the course of the year. Um, so if you're a society member and don't get a chance to get one, which I understand will probably be very, very difficult because there's so few, um, we want to give you at least a chance to kind of share this with us. So. With that said, do you want to on the road. Um, this this dram is going on the road with us for the remainder of 2018. So look out for when we are in your city um, having an event because this will be my purse whiskey, so to speak. Um, I want as many of our members and prospective members as possible to be able to try the best whiskey in the world. I guess um, so. That's that's the reason for that, guys. But uh, until then. Ben and I are happy to, to try it right now and talk about it a little bit. Um, 29.224 entitled, We Arrived, uh, the best in show winner today from the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. And it is an absolute smoke show um, right off the bat. But again, as I, I like to say, it's a very elegant peat. Um, at 18 years old, coming from Isla, you're going to see that subdued peat. Uh, that's not typically indicative of this distillery, in my opinion. I'm going to kind of pull up um, the bottle. I know it's very bright here, and it looks just like every other bottle. But uh, You're holding it. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> you know, what I think is exciting about this whiskey, and obviously winning the award and best in show, uh, 29224 is, um, in a lot of ways, very, very common for um, our monthly outturns. We have whiskeys just like this. From this distillery of a similar age every That's single a really month. good point ben um there this whiskey yes it, it won all of the awards uh today but at the same time it is really indicative of what we see coming out of this distillery and then our releases across the board with the society are at this at this level so in a lot of ways this is just another regular run-of-the-mill scotch malt whiskey society um cask that uh, snuck through the cracks and got the recognition that it deserves, I guess. So straight away, like as Amanda, like as you just mentioned, I mean, this is, for an Isla whiskey, you know, 18 years is actually a significant amount of time. And you consider that a lot of the whiskeys from this region are bottled at younger ages. Yeah. Um, and in that time, the, the peat has really become subdued in a lot of ways, making the whiskey not as intense, a bit more approachable. It also allows for more of those, the true Isla whiskey characteristics beyond the peat they really shine through, which is what I think is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a very subdued um, peat to drive that home. Very elegant. Um, it's decadent. It's a real honor to have this, this one. And yeah. so thank you Ben for sending me a little sample of this from your bottle. <laughs> well, so yeah, there's definitely like this cold ash element. I mean, it's undoubtedly peated. Um, but there's like an interesting like meatiness to it, or maybe it's more like a steamed shellfish or something. So I'm there, getting. It's yeah, just, there is a meatiness. There's like um, kind of like those. I think we kind of touched on this on the first episode of our different whiskey, but um, almost like a braised meat could go really well with this, um, or anything really savory. Uh, savory, even even some raw bar foods. I could do oysters with this whiskey very easily. Um, fresh oysters, and as you can imagine from Isla, that would be perfect. Yeah, I'm thinking this is absolutely, I think it's a raw, the raw bar element is perfect, having some raw yeah. oysters or um, any sort of like, I'm trying to think of like a sashimi or something, mm -hmm. but it's it's so interesting. It's from a single cask, you know, going back to, you know, what is this and what makes this whiskey so special? I think it's just, it's a lot of it is nature and just being patient and bottling it at the right time. And this is just an interesting time in this whiskey's life. It's it's developed a lot of characteristics that most high whiskey don't have. The peat element is very much there, but it's, it's it's taking a step back just enough to allow some of these floral notes to come through. It's very grassy and earthy. Um, totally. In a very very elegant way. In a surprisingly elegant way. Surprisingly yeah. elegant. I'm, well, I, I feel like I overuse I overuse the word elegant with a lot of our peats, especially as they go higher up in the age statements. But 
Um, very earthy, meaty. Um, uh, just one note on what you were just saying, Ben. Just a shout out to the Scotchmont Whiskey Society's tasting panel, um, which I think really deserves the recognition across the board for this award today. Um, because first and foremost, this group comes together in Leith, uh, just outside of Edinburgh in Scotland, and they determine when the right time to quote unquote harvest the whiskey from the cask into the bottles. Um, and there are often times where they will take out the whiskey as a sample and they'll decide it's not ready yet. And instead of going straight to market with it and trying to sell it, they'll put it back to rest and make sure that whiskey is up to snuff and up to the standards of where we always bottle at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. So this to me, as an 18 year old Isla, it's a very, it's a high age statement for an Isla, um, for sure. I think the sweet spot for Isla whiskeys is to me, in my opinion, around nine years. Um, this is well above that. Uh, it takes it takes a great panel of, of people working out of Scotland for the society to determine that this was the right time to bring this liquid to the bottle from the cask. Yeah, and I think, you know, if, if for those of you who are members and, and wondering um, where, how can I get this whiskey, if, if, um, you know, obviously it, it, it won a big award and that's, we're really, really excited. Again, we'll be sharing this with as many people as possible through our tasting events around the U.S. in the coming year. Um, but if not, you know, look forward to a lot of whiskeys very, very similar to this every yeah. single month. I mean, I think Absolutely. That's a very good point, Ben. Um, I've been with the Society now for just about two years and I've seen a lot of great whiskey coming out of this distillery. It's one of my covetable distilleries that I tend to chase, even though I don't recommend that to our members because one cast from the distillery could taste completely polarizing to the next, but it's something that I really do enjoy distillery. Um, yeah, so uh, any other closing notes on, on We Arrived, Ben? Well, I think I think that, and like just looking at the opportunity. Obviously, we went through. If anybody has any questions about those whiskeys, obviously you can feel free to comment below or just shoot us a message. Should um, we check out those comments? See see where we're at. Yeah, and I think I want to just gonna, just going to share that you know again, all these are kind of brand new. Some of them are going pretty quickly today. I know we had some whiskeys that we're thinking about chasing, but they've already sold out within hours. Um, so on an unprecedented level of <laughs> activity from our membership today. Um, yeah, thank you guys very much. Um, but when we drop a new outturn uh, in the beginning of the month, it tends to whiskey gets to get tends to get snatched up pretty quickly. So I always encourage people that are looking for certain distilleries or flavor profiles um, to act quickly uh, because the disappointing emails that I get usually start in a couple of days after the first of the month, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and so the question just again about the availability is this uh, 29224, we arrived uh, the winner for today, um, will be released in a couple of weeks in very limited quantities. Um, we're still sorting out a system to, to ensure that people can get them. It's, it's likely that we'll do some sort of lottery for all members. Um, right. But we'll, we'll more information will come on that. But again, the big thing is we will bring these, excuse me, bring these bottles with us to tasting events around yeah. the US. So that's many as many as possible can taste it. Exactly that. Exactly that. Ben. As I tour, as we tour the the country for the remainder of 2018, um, please expect to see 29.224. We arrived at our events, um, at our outturn preview tastings, um, any society event that we can get it at. That's we want it to be experienced by as many people as possible, and that was the way to do it. To share a dram together. Um, Okay, so we went through the entire lineup of the brand new May outturn. Um, they're all available right now, currently at smwsa.com. If you're not a member of the society already, there's never been a better day to join than May 1st, 2018, um, for many different reasons. But we have some great whiskey here uh, from the lineup from today's outturn. There's definitely some great whiskey on the horizon. Um, Anything else, Ben, about uh, any housekeeping things about the society? No, I think, I think look, right now, obviously, you know, a lot of you are members, and we're glad to have you on board. Um, I just, you know, we're coming out with a lot of exciting whiskeys. Um, but really, the big thing is, you know, ultimately, we, we are a whiskey club, and 
for a community of whiskey lovers. And so you want to connect and, and obviously listen to your feedback because ultimately we're not just a regular whiskey brand. We have, we have the society, so it's a very different experience, um, which is why I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, and I know some of you, judging from the comments, have these whiskeys as well. So we have a few that are that were some recent fan favorites from the past few months, uh, which is 48.82. by H is possessing and penetrating. We have that. Um, if anyone has that, please stand up. Um, also, I'm excited to kind of jump into one that just came out recently, which is 37.96, Cinnamon Semolina Pudding. And then the one that everybody was jumping for last month, which is 4226, Smoke Plum Lemonade. So if you have any of those, you want to share your comments below. We're going to go through those. But really kind of just take this time now that we've done all the talking to just open up and kind of address some of these questions one at a time. So. Great. Cool. Sounds good. So I think the 4882 is what I'm going to start with. And it's funny because we went from a very peated whiskey to a very light first fill bourbon barrel. Yeah, this is not the typical order that we would go in, but we went through the outturn in the whiskey rainbow order from the lightest to the peatiest. And now we're kind of going back to these three in the same way on their own little rainbow. Um, so this is 48.82 entitled Vivacious, Zesty and Penetrating. It is a 12 year old space ad. It's from a couple of months ago, so like Ben said, there should be some of you at home that have this whiskey and could be sharing this dram with us virtually right now, hopefully. If so, Slamja, cheers to you guys. Yeah, and so uh, quite a few questions coming in. Uh, um, just a lot about like partner bars and events, so we're actually reevaluating um, all our event, our event schedule, just with the, the ambition of doing a lot more and meeting new people face-to-face. -face. Um, Scotch and Sif, glad to have you. You mentioned about doing more events at Jack Rose. Stay tuned. We're looking to do a lot more. They're an awesome partner bar. Yeah. And a lot of our members love, you know, quite frankly, probably one of the best bars uh, for whiskey lovers in the United States. So yes, we will be doing more with them. Uh, and it, just another couple of questions. So when are glasses available to purchase? That's actually something everybody's been asking for. And, and we have only glasses here, believe it or not. But, except for you have a lot of glasses over there. But, I do. These are our older glasses with our older logos. These are vintage at this point. Um, we do get that question quite a bit. I know it's something that we're really trying to do from a logistical standpoint to get these glasses available to members. They do exist. It's just about crossing a, a bridge. Um, as you know, the society here in the U.S. is run by just a, a small handful of people. Our team is very tiny. Um, so it's one of the things high on our priority list. Hopefully we can have these glasses available in the next few months, um, maybe by the summer, fingers crossed. Uh, but I don't want to make any promises for those colleagues watching <laughs> that might have to execute that. But please stay tuned because it is on the list. Anything else, Ben, in terms of questions? I have a question. So are there any new partner bars on the horizon? There's, yes, yeah, there are, we, like Ben said, we're reevaluating the entire partner bar, um, I guess, uh, network in the U.S. and around the world, actually, right now. So if there is a whiskey bar near you that you swear on and that you love and it's your home base and they have the best whiskey selection in your area, please feel free to send us an email at info at smwsa.com. Um, that's kind of how we built the partner bar network in the past, but yeah, there are there are some new things coming up with that as well. I'm gonna pour a dram of this four two two six. Just okay. That was kind of jump on. I know a lot of you have this one at home. Um, this was your selection, Amanda, last month. Um, very popular whiskey, and you guys do have it. This is to you. Um, this one. Um, this is a distillery that, again, I, I don't recommend this to our members, but I, I do sometimes collect uh, and adore certain distilleries over and over again. Um, but from the society standpoint, we're really supposed to be looking at whiskey um, as what's in the glass and the flavor profile, understanding that one cast from the same distillery would be very drastically different to even the cast that would follow it. Um, just given the nature of single cast whiskey and how obscure and, and how it's there, it's mostly like snowflakes that no two are alike. But from distillery four, I really love a lot of what I see out of distillery four. Some casks more than others for sure, 
there was a cask released maybe two years ago now called Nordic Nosh, and it was one of my favorite casks. And I picked this one um, because it had some tasting notes that were reminiscent of that. And it's called Smoked Plum Lemonade. It is a 12 year old and it went very fast. It's been sold out for a minute now. So uh, for those of you at home who are enjoying it, know how special it is. Um, yeah. Smoked Plum Lemonade. And I think what's interesting about this was, you know, we've, we've talked about it in the past, but um, this is, in a way, it's very different from what you see from the distillery itself, from its official bottlings. And so I think that just kind of speaks to the uniqueness of single cask whiskey. Um, again, kind of the reason why society is taking the stance to leave the distillery off the bottle is because sometimes it's difficult to judge something properly when um, a single cask is, as nature intended to be, very different from any other. So this is one of those cases where it's, I would know it taste it. I would never guess the distillery correctly. Uh, it's really that's just, true. That's true. It's just a unique experience, kind of on its own. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. I might not guess that this was a distillery to the far north in Scotland on an island. So a question here, a really good one. Um, you've mentioned you had quite a few releases from Distillery Twenty Nine, but what is the process for selection of new cask from distilleries? So. You know, in essence, you know, we have a tasting panel based in Edinburgh in the UK, uh, which is our home, the home of the society. We're in the US here. I mean, it's in New York, I'm in Chicago, just to clarify, we're not in Scotland, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, in essence, we have a tasting panel that's comprised of distilling experts and other really tasting experts, if you will, um, who will blind taste test all different casts and really determine what is unique and special uh, to then be bottled by members. In a lot of instances, you know, a sample will go across the tasting panel and they'll say, you know what, this isn't quite ready yet. Let's leave it in the wood. In that case, the whiskey will go back in and stay there for another year or two or so until it goes back blindly again. And so it's always just about finding things that are really exciting and really special. Um, and as I mentioned, we do have a lot from, the, and that was the question about Distillery 29 as it was referenced. We do have, we try to bring in cast from Distillery 29. Um, they're a great partner of ours. So every month we're seeing something. and. It is the range of 17 to 22 years, sometimes, sometimes even more. Um, and that's, again, that's kind of why I was excited personally that a cast 29224, an 18 year old, excuse me, was named uh, Pleasant Show at the, the Spirits Competition in San Francisco because it is so indicative of I think, the types of casts that we try to bottle from the Spirit Distillery. Yeah, exactly. Very well put, Ben. Um, I think that the tasting panel has a pretty <laughs> tough and amazing job. Um, in that they are really, you'll notice actually, let me cut my own self off there, but you'll notice that the society bottles a lot of the casts. Our age statements vary. They're kind of obscure in their own right. Um, they're not round, well rounded numbers like a 25 year old or a 15 year old or a 10 year old. You'll see 17 year olds and 13 year olds and 11 year olds um, coming out of the society. And I think that really showcases what the tasting panel is really tasked to do is to um, pluck these whiskeys from the cask when they're exactly ripe at their highest uh, sweet spot. And that determination happens through a series of sampling um, that goes on and on. Uh, with cask, with Distillery 29, as Ben said, we have a really great relationship with Distillery 29. I know that not a lot of people can say that, actually. And our relationship with them goes back many, many generations. And it's something that we are very fortunate to see a lot of coming, um, not nearly, not on every outturn, but often. Every time I go to smws.a.com personally, I, I'm always greeted with a 29 there, and I, I recommend it often for people, those PD lovers in the room, which I imagine there are a few of, right? We have a really good comment. Send Trump a tweet to change the state laws for alcohol availability. Um, Amanda, I think you're probably on Twitter. I can't say that I am, but if you want to carry forward that mission. Um, Wait, what was the comment, Ben? Send Trump a tweet to change the state laws for alcohol availability. All right. So has Trump ruined alcohol availability? No, no, he's just he's the president. <laughs> president so we I don't have a stance on government politics here at the Scotch Wall Whiskey Society. Um, was it a shipping issue? I don't know. Um, any other comments or questions, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, I, I do want to like, get into this 
whiskey that I think it's the last one for us, which is 37.96. Um, I'll talk, I mean, how, you know, I know it's, it is the last one and, and it came out and I actually have a little sample bottle here because this was a whiskey that we shared at Whiskey X Chicago, which is a festival last Friday. Um, I pulled this from our supply because I knew it was going to go out very quickly and it did. And so this is all I have here, sadly. But so this one is called cinnamon. Sorry, cinnamon pudding. Cinnamon semolina pudding. Cinnamon semolina pudding, and it really does smell like oatmeal and and cinnamon right right there to me on the nose. Yeah, if you don't like peat scotch and sniff, this is one for you. It's it's a thirteen year old space high whiskey that spent twelve years in American oak and bourbon hogshead. Mm. One year, the first Phil Pedro managed Sherry Hogshead. So this is one of those single cast. That is good. Cask whiskeys, double matured, if you will. Is this one still available, Ben, or is this the one that we are hoping that people at home are enjoying with us? This this is one that is still available. It came out a couple of weeks ago as part of our April digital outturn, and you no, know, most months of the year we, we have actually you know, kind of two outturns. We have the main one, and we sent the print out with all the info of the whiskeys the beginning of the month. And then two weeks later, we usually release a, a few special casks after the fact. Um, this is one of those as well. So sometimes these casks are, I'm excited because they don't get as much attention as the main outturn. And obviously we're here tasting all of these live, but they kind of fly under the radar. And I think some, you know, they're no less exciting to me from a whiskey experience. Uh, this one being, it's a personal favorite of mine. And I think people said that it's going under the radar. So. Here's the 37.96. Oh, for all the PX sherry fans out there. I get a lot of pear also on the nose with this one. Again, totally indicative of the region, but a true, like, ripe pear. A nice, nice subdued cinnamon spice and warm oatmeal. It feels like a little bit of a, a guilty pleasure here, this one, for me. Yeah, I think it's... it's um... I'm really excited about this one. It's funny when you look at whiskey and we all have kind of our own favorites and, and different preferences. I saw this one, I said, this could be interesting, but I didn't expect to really like it as much as I do. I think that's kind of a lesson to be learned back too, right? I mean, it's like, we, we look at things and we, we read about them and we say, this, I'm gonna love this, and then we taste them. And sometimes we're like, you know what? Not what I was thinking. This is one I, was like, I thought this could be really good, but I didn't think it would be Probably one of my personal favorite society releases of all time. I'll just say that. Wow, Ben, bold, bold. Yeah. So you, so what you're saying, Ben, is that you grew to love this one. Your relationship started off a little rocky. You weren't sure if it was going to work out, and now it's one of your favorite society releases of all time. And that well, is 37.96. Yeah, actually, it was Carolina pudding. It was not spent so much I grew to love, but um, the moment I opened it. Over the bottle and then pour this drown. The first one I thought this is incredible. It, it was something right away. Like this is this is really special. Um, but when I when I was reading about it before it came out, I thought, no, oh, this is gonna be pretty good. But I didn't really expect it to be this special. At least for I me. love that. I love that. That's I have a similar story with uh, that Nordic Nosh I, I mentioned from Distillery Four from a few years back, and also this uh, Smoke Plum Lemonade. So a question also from Drogetta, uh, Ben, have you tried 93.78? So 93.78, uh, unfortunately, no, that came out today. Uh, 25 year old from Camelton and Old Rosa Sherry, but um, if you have that one, that's great because that sold out in about two hours. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, so, you know, unfortunately, we, we try to reserve these whiskeys as many as possible for our members. Um, because they're all single cast and pretty limited. So we're lucky now that Amanda and I get to taste some of these and we try to share these with other members too in our cities. But that was one that we just thought, you know what, people are going to get that one pretty quickly. And so, yeah, when it comes to Camelton whiskey, we haven't had any for a while. And, um, and it went in just a couple of hours. Wow. Spoiler alert. Uh, Nearly but, departed. Yeah. Spoiler alert, there will be more. Um, oh, so, good. You didn't get it. We have a lot of exciting whiskeys from that region and kind of beyond coming out. So, uh, anyway. Okay. Well, um, I think we went through the entire lineup. Uh, if there's any more comments or questions, we'll give a last call for those. Yeah. Uh, and final housekeeping notes. If 
there if anything here that you love um, be sure to jump on it while it's hot as we were just mentioning that one that did sell out in a couple of hours today um, the place to go as you know is smwsa.com and Ben you were about to say something and I cut you off oh well, I'm just gonna say you know I know we went through a lot of whiskeys and maybe like really quick run through of just what they are I know a lot of these are currently available and there's no telling how long they will be available um, so maybe just just to kind of highlight you know uh, we started off with 54151 which is insanely drinkable um, really kind of bright lively very kind of great aperitif whiskey um, yeah 100.14 boozy basil blueberry I got the sense Amanda you kind of you were into this one a little bit yeah this one was like a waft of an herb garden is what I would say so there was that fresh mint there was basil which kind of rounded it out and made it a bit more warm um, but to me, perfect with hard cheeses and a drizzle of honey, my guilty pleasure, maybe some almonds as well, but a great place to start again. Um, I did really like that. So that was 100.14 boozy basil blueberry. The third one then was the showstopper, I think, of the night, which was 50.95, and that was called Magical Moments. It was a 27-year-old Lowland. Um, this is the one, Ben, that you said was, it had a sense of depth that was definitely different than the first two, right? Yeah, I mean, this one's been categorized in our old and dignified flavor profile, and it's very much that. It's got, it, it's a different different type of whiskey when you're 27 years, nearly three decades in oak. Um, it's developed true complexity. Um, I know complexity is can be derived from a lot of ways, but with a single cast, this is, it's really the only experience that you can have from time, and I think it's just a beautiful overall timeless yeah so. totally so I, I would call that the showstopper in the lineup um moving on to the fourth one that we tried which was the uh the green that was g15.1 lead us to temptation it was a nine-year-old highland grain um this is the the odd man standing i think in the outturn um a lot of bright apple uh very mal malty <laughs> me I think, I think again, first cast from the Silver G15. Uh, obviously, it is the grain whiskey, the only one of the lot this evening. But really, I, I just think again, going back to it, really beautiful and developed for something that's only nine years old. Uh, and at a hundred dollars, I think it's really again for the first bottle from the distillery, a really enjoyable experience and a good value as well. Totally, all those tropical fruits, um, and again, yeah, at a hundred dollar price point for the first distillery that. Uh, the first bottle from this distillery. It's a perfect whiskey to sort of coast into those warmer nights, and it is absolutely like that bonfire whiskey for the summer. Yeah. Um, the fifth one was 66.108, and this one was my personal palate favorite called Caramelized Smokiness. It was an 11-year-old Highland, definitely that toasted marshmallow, sweet and subdued peat, I would say. Yeah, this is your this is your kind of standout of the evening. I, yeah, I mean, it was right? for my personal palate. This is the one that I'm going to end the night with. I kind of knew that right away. Um, even by the name, caramelized smokiness is speaks to me. <laughs> yeah, um, and then obviously we have 29224, which is... right, which I'm also going to end the night with this one <laughs> um, because how can we not, right? So yeah, 22 again, our 18-year-old Isla, uh, just won the award for uh, Best in Show at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Today was announced publicly. Um, really okay. classic one. Again, we'll be releasing this one in a couple of weeks in very limited quantities. Um, it'll be relatively difficult to get, but we want to share the whiskey with as many people as possible. So we'll be bringing this around to society events. Yeah. In the US. So if you, if you yeah, come to one of our events. I mean, I know we're in Chicago. We have one coming up in just a few weeks. Or less than that, actually. Um, it might be there. We will absolutely be bringing 29.224. We arrived with us um, for the for the duration of the year of 2018 to as many events as possible, to offer it to as many members as possible, um, to share a dram with them uh, of this very special whiskey. So I guess that's a wrap, Ben. We went through everything. And if there's any questions, of course, you can email us at info at smwsa.com. You can always visit our website at smwsa.com. 
You can find myself and Ben on social media. Um, our handle is SMWS America on Instagram and um, on Facebook. We're at the SMWS, I believe. And Ben is Mr. Single Malt Alliance. And I'm Lady Amanda Victoria. I guess that's it for me. Signing off, Ben, here. Thanks, broadcaster Lady Amanda. Uh, You're so welcome, Ben. <laughs> Well, thank you all for joining us, too. Um, again, if you have any questions, shoot us a message. But uh, stay tuned for more of these tastings. Uh, this video will obviously be reposted. So if you want to go back and kind of catch our notes on any of the whiskeys um, that you're interested in. Otherwise, again, just ask us directly. We'd be happy to answer any questions. But um, thanks for coming together and making this night. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. All right. Yeah. Cheers.